Well, a very good evening, a very good morning, and a good afternoon to all of your friends. My name is Lupumlo Joka. Welcome to yet another installment of Rising Stars. If you are wondering about what Rising Stars is, this is a platform where we encourage, inspire, and want to create or inspire people to uh, actively play a part in the process of self-development, particularly when it comes to leadership. Uh, in the context of universities. Today, I'm sitting with a, someone I've been um, watching from afar for quite some time, Mr. Pedro Mzileni, who is an activist, a researcher, an academic, and most of you might know him from all of the interviews he's done. I think I was watching this morning your interview from the NYDA board interviews, and your content is really readily available on YouTube. Man, thank you for your time. Thank you for sitting with us. Let's get straight into it. Um, who is Petro Mzileni? How would you describe yourself to people who have never heard of who you are? Yo. <laughs> uh, yeah, as you said, I'm, a, I'm an activist. Mm. Uh, I grew up uh, in the township community of Zulicha, which has shaped my thinking, mm. my outlook on life. Then I went to Nelson Mandela University in Kabecha to pursue my studies, but also to understand the world around me more, you know, critically. So that is where I developed, that's where I did all my studies, mm. that's where I grew as a student leader in the student movement, uh, up till today where I am now a researcher, a lecturer, a teacher, an activist. So I am, I've always been involved in the process of making our society better. Yeah. And, and that process for you, where did it start? Because it, not, it didn't start in university. Because I remember when I first saw you, um, the, the beginning of the days when I first engaged with you, you were already an activist, you were already involved with SASCO and all of those things. So where did that start for you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I said, it started in my community. Because when you are when you are born in the town in a township, you have no choice but to be active, yeah. you know? because the conditions there are not good. So you want to do anything possible to you know transform the community for the better, mm. and also change uh, the situation of where you come from, yeah. you know? So the conditions of blackness they make you an activist automatically yes. if you pay attention. Because we do grow up with people in the same conditions, but they are not active. They just choose to be the people that they are who don't give a damn about what is going on. Mm. Yeah, well. But if you pay attention and you want to see things change for the better, then the conditions will make you become an activist. Yeah. 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 So that's why I, I, I came to university. University was not necessarily a place for schooling for me, but it was... A, a, a platform because one thing people don't realize about universities in South Africa how they are unique they are national institutions mm. you see so if you do anything in a university you appear nationally yeah 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 so being active as a student leader is very critical in changing the, the path of society because if you look at all our past leaders in the if, if you if you read history <coughs> horizontally mm. Mandela, Mbeki, Chris Ani, Thomas Sankara, Robert Mugabe, Winnie Mandela. If you look at their best times of leadership, mm. it was when they were students. Yeah. So it's not true that when you are a student or when you are a young person, you are, you, you are, you, you are raw material mm. or you are still unprepared. Yeah. Yeah, it's not true. Actually, when you are young and you are a student, you are a complete product that is ready to change society already wow. because that's what our history tells us. Wow. So it's as if now, when you are young, there is this future that you are being prepared for. Mm. Yeah, more, like no study, get a degree, maybe nine years later you'll be a manager. Yeah. No, yeah. our history doesn't tell us that. Mm. Our history says at the age of 24, 28, 21, 18 years, you are a leader, you are a complete go make a revolution because that's what our leaders did. Yeah. Yeah. Well. yeah. Man, um, you, you're touching on leadership and that's pretty much why we wanted to just sit down with you and, and, and just pick your brain on some issues related to leadership. Mm. Maybe let's start by what your views on 
um, what leadership is. And I'll, and, and I'll say this before you answer that. I think personally there's a huge leadership vacuum in our country uh, across all spheres. Uh, you know, um, if you look at what's happening uh, politically, you look at what's happening in the economy, um, in, in religion, across all spheres, I think there's a huge so shortage and a huge vacuum of leaders. Mm -hmm. So, um, and having had watched some of your interviews, I've seen that you are a big proponent of relying on self and tapping into, because I was watching even the N NYDA interview where you made mention of South Africa utilizing the resources and the the people that it has to to rebuild from within if i'm quoting you correctly so what 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 are your views what do you think of leadership what are your thoughts what thoughts can you share with young people who will be watching this on number 1 what leadership is number 2 the type or the kind of leaders that we need to move our country forward five things quickly sure yeah. First thing, and this is from practical experience, I don't got a quote from yeah, the textbook. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. First thing that you need to be an impactful and a transformative leader is, is to remove fear. Mm. Yeah, but it's not a fear. You need to be bold because when you are a leader, most you are at the forefront, you are charting the way. Yeah, but so you need to remove fear because the reason why young people are so underneath in this country they are being bullied by all the people. Mm. It's not because young people can't take over tomorrow. It's just that there's this fear that, hey, can we take them on? Mm. You know, am I going to have bread tomorrow if I take them on? Will mm. I still have my job if I take them on? Mm. Are we capable to we trust each other? Mm. Yeah, so fear, you need to put fear aside because it is only when you are bold and confident yeah. where you're going to lead. You can't lead people if you are in fear. Yeah, mm. You can't play football if you have fear. You need to be a person who is confident. You, you won't make money if you have fear. Mm. Yeah, so fear is the first thing that you must get rid of. Two, um, you need to be knowledgeable because you need to know where you're leading people to yeah. or, what is that, or, what is that you, or what is that you want to do mm. when you... Uh, get into a leadership position or at a leadership moment. Yeah. Yeah, you now need to know what to do. Like Ndioti, Nipa. You know, I am leading these people to where. Yeah. You understand? So knowledge is important. Yeah, so if, 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 if the knowledge of people is around here, yours needs to be above. You need to know things and say things that people are not ready to say. Mm. Yeah, so understanding the society and the conditions that you're working under, understanding where society needs to go and how it is going to get there. So yeah. knowledge, the love for books, the love for people's perspective. And by people's per per perspective, I'm not referring to educated people only. Mm. You need to learn from everyone. The old people, the unemployed, yeah. even children, they teach you things. So you need books and so on. You can't lead. I, I, I can't imagine leading without knowing things yeah, yeah so I, I i read all the time because mm. i need everything i lay my hands on I, I i need to read it so that i know what's going on mm. yeah, three you need you, you need convictions about what you're doing strong yeah. convictions because for an example if a problem in the country is that 75 year olds go to a public hospital at 5 a.m mm in order for them to be attended. You, you, have you yeah. been to a public hospital? Yeah. Public hospital, you find a 75-year-old that is sitting there from 5 a.m. Mm. and they only get attended at 2 p.m. only to get maybe a panado or an x-ray reading. Mm. Those are the conditions of accessing healthcare when you're a person living in poverty in South Africa. Mm. So when you're a leader, you need, a, you need convictions of understanding the pain of poverty mm. and what does it cause to people. Mm. Yeah, because the problem we have today, it's people who are leaders, but they don't know, or they don't have, uh, uh, they don't have a conscious of understanding the day-to-day -day living conditions of people, and therefore frame their leadership with strong convictions on how to resolve those challenges. Why do you think that is? That... It is because um, the class structure of our society distances our leaders from people. Mm. As soon as 
they get into those positions. And it's not as if that thing is automatic. Leaders prefer it. You know, I'm a mayor, I can't stay here anymore. Let me leave, go stay in mm-hmm. suburb, yeah. enjoy my life, send my kids to, 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 to good schools. Yeah. Basically, let me pay my way out of this poverty mm. and only theorize about it on TV. Yeah, well, that's what they do. So if you say to a minister, bro, 75 year olds wake up at 4 a.m., they go to Livingston, mm. they leave at 2 p.m., how can you fix that? He can hear what you are saying, but mm. he, he doesn't have a, you know, a concrete yeah. understanding of what it means on a day-to-day basis and the pain it causes to people. Mm. That thing of living in poverty. Yeah, so you need a conviction of what is it exactly that I'm, uh, what is it that I'm there to do? What are, what are these people's needs and how do I resolve them tomorrow? Mm. Because I know them. I have strong convictions to, mm. to resolve those uh, those things, yeah, yeah bro. And then the last two, I would say, a level of integrity, yeah, because when you are a leader, you need to be an example to people around you, mm. yeah, bro. Yeah. If the constitution or the rules of behavior are, are written down, when you are a leader, when am I, brother, ne? Everything written down must be a minimum requirement to you, mm. yeah, bro. If they say don't steal, or if they say Let's make an example about the constitution. Constitution mm-hmm. is written most. These are the things that you must do. Yeah. Yeah, when you are a leader, those things must be minimum requirements to you. I'm trying to th- think of an example. Okay, let's make another example. Yeah. If they say to you, the standard of performance in this department for a leader is 60%. Mm-hmm. Yeah? When you get 60%, you are a good employee, yeah. you get a bonus and so on. 60% for you as a person who is a leader must not be a maximum. It must be the foundation. It must actually be a minimum for you. I'm with you. You understand? In other words, in everything you do as a leader, you seek to exceed the minimum requirements. Yeah, bo? So how people behave in society. Yeah, bo? If people make four children from four different mothers in society, and that's the standard of manhood, mm. to you, you can't behave like that. Mm. You need to exceed where people see standards. That is a level of integrity. That is where uh, people now... Basically, you must be this symbol that everyone wishes to become. That is a source of inspiration. Yes. And you become a source of inspiration when you exceed the minimum standards that are set uh, for, for, for people. I remember when we were student leaders in the, in the university, they used to tell us that when you do 10 modules, you must pass 5, mm. 50% of them. Then you'll qualify to be in the SRC or whatever. And, you know, we just said passing 5 is what every student is going to do, but we're not going to do that because we are their leaders. Mm. We're going to pass 10. Mm. We're going to pass all of them. We're going to be excellent in school. Yeah. We are going to treat people very well. Mm. We are going to challenge management properly. Basically, we're going to do everything that yeah. <coughs> people are still unable to do. That's why I, I studied all the way up to PhD. Not because... Um, if, if I'm a leader in a university environment, and if the people who led before me, like about Anton Lembete, Anton Lembete died doing his PhD. Mm. Madiba went to university. Mm. Chris went to university and so on. Yeah, bo? Yeah. What has, all of them. So I, I can't end at grade six. Yeah. Yeah, I grade need six to six. complete education from grade one up to PhD mm. so that when I talk about education, people can say that I exceeded minimum standards. Mm. You, you, you get I'm what I mean? You. I'm with yeah. you. I'm with you. Looking, looking at, at that environment of leadership in the context of universities, yeah. You are SRC president 2017. Yeah. And just this morning, I was just watching that speech you were making before the then deputy president, Cyril Ramaphosa, okay. when, when the mm. university was being okay. renamed. And there you spoke about five, was it five key things? You just went up and you said, I'm going to speak. About the <laughs> I want to, man, I want to um, <clears throat> just pick your brain on some of your reflections from that time. What did you learn from student politics? Mm. And I'm, I'm going to say this before you answer. 
one of the things that I see across all universities, but one of the things I experienced at Nelson Mandela University um, that relates to student politics is the whole phenomenon of party politics. Mm -hmm. So because I'm this, I belong to this student organization, mm -hmm. I cannot really engage and build and, um, you know, work with so-and-so because they mm -hmm. have a different belief system. And I think it's quite a simple and small thing, but it feeds into society as well because that's what we see. Mm -hmm. We see this culture of, because I belong to this political party, mm -hmm. I can never agree, I can never work with someone who's of that political party. So did you experience that during your time? Did mm -hmm. you know, um, what, what were some of the key learnings as an SRC mm -hmm. president? Yeah. The, I think what made us break those boundaries of parties for us, it was the common struggles facing every black student. Mm -hmm. When, 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 nice. when NESFAS excludes you, it doesn't say, I, we're not going to exclude this one. Mm -hmm. It's from so, DAS or this one. Mm -hmm. We'll exclude those ones from SASCO. No, it, 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 it chops all your heads mm -hmm. as, a, as a group. Yeah, well. So the conditions that black students were facing as a group, Yabo, united us, especially the Fizz Must Fall uh, movement. Mm. That one was a flat surface where yeah. every party yeah. made contributions to the table mm. about our common condition as black students. Yabo? So reaching out to get to speak to, 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 to people about their conditions honestly with conviction and with radical ideas, mm. it's what will make people follow you. Mm. Yabo? Yeah. So, Mnake, I would speak to everyone. If Daso had a conference um, somewhere in Chobek, this was me being president at the time, if they had a conference, I would call them. Mm. Get on the phone and call Bex. It was Bex leading them mm. at the time. I would call Bex. Hey, Bex, can you come present the resolutions of your conference to us? Maybe they might help us. To us in Sasko, to us in As the SRC. Oh, wow. Yeah, well, the EFF, come. Present your, 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 you know, your resolutions. They might help us. So regular meetings, you know, you call them. You, you basically you respect them. Yeah. You, you reach out to them, and you also show the, the path of where are we supposed to go. For instance, it took time for people of Daso to internalize that free education is a solution. Mm. You know, to the higher education challenges facing black students. It took time. If you read their statements around 2012, 2013, they didn't want to see free education. Mm -hmm. But if you read their statements today, they can see that, no, actually, this is the right path to go. This is a former white liberal student organization pursuing these radical ideas we had. Yeah, mm -hmm. So speaking, it goes back to what I said, yeah, removing fear, knowledge, knowing what works, what doesn't work, and where we need to go having strong convictions, the, a total commitment to the pain of poverty mm. and what it does to people and how you're going to resolve it. Um, and then uh, that integrity, because I think one of the things that made our work much easier was the trust that people had in us. Mina, when I go to the university to speak with any leader, they, 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 they show respect to the name, you know, Pedro Mzileni, we know what he yeah. did, what he achieved, who he is. It's credibility. Yeah, credibility, yes. So it becomes easier to, to speak to, 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 to comrades, whatever, wh 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 whatever party they come from. Yeah? And those things, they are values that I took seriously from our forebears. Yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Winnie, Matiba, Lembete, Becky, all of them. When, you, when those figures are being mentioned, yeah, well, take time to to read their mm. the, their life stories. I have many books about them. This one is about Oliver. Mugabe. These are books you've all read, no? Yeah, Mugabe, Fanon, Samora, Mbeki, Lumumba. Yeah, well, Lumumba, Mbeki, Samora. Thomas Sangara, there's a lot of them there as well. Yeah. So I, I take time to to read about these comrades. Because yeah, you well. want to power in power. Yes, because I want to understand how on earth did they do it? Because they are also human beings like yeah. us. They have arms, they have ID numbers, you know, they have two eyes. Yeah. By a they have fear. But how on earth did they do it? 
then you realize, but oh, okay, they followed a particular template mm. to to do what they did, mm. and that is what okay, I have committed myself to to do, yeah. and that's how okay, I I think I end up attracting people yeah. and speaking um, speaking to to them. Yeah, but yeah. for instance, you said you watched the interviews I did on on on, on, on YouTube. Mm. Another person doesn't even know who I am, but when they when they listen to the, the the content that is there they they can see by no man this person knows yes. their story these people you know is, is one of the people so yeah. you love people you understand their plight you you chat the way forward with them and 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 and, and yeah off you go oh and and, and lastly hey i prepare bro no. I, I i over prepare yeah bro. if if i'm gonna go to a platform or to a meeting mm. or to ever I, I i i prepare i i prepare and i respect every platform mm. so if you are sitting in a meeting i take notes i still all, these are all my notebooks from first year wow. up to the wow. end wow. so a lecture that was delivered in 2014 by a certain professor i still have those notes, You've got the notes. I've, wow. I've kept them yeah, well. then i want to zoom in lastly to your thoughts and and maybe your message to young people man you shared so many so many valid crucial critical ideas on that nyda interview and i'd, I'd recommend and uh, urge you to just go and watch it and, and view it i think it's on your it's on your channel yes. um what's your message to the young people of south africa who are not where you are who did not um maybe who didn't have a opportunity to attend university uh, young people who are busy starting their own businesses, young people who are contemplating on whether um, they should live, they should continue living because of whatever problems and challenges that they find themselves in. Young people who are well off, um, you know, who might not have experienced the same struggles that we did. What would be your holistic message to all of those people who will be watching this? Two things, ne? and I want to speak to everyone in this room. Yeah. Yeah, I want to tell you, the youth of today. We are the youth that was born in the 80s and the 90s. Sure. Ne? One thing you must realize, Braz, about that period ne? is that it was a period of transition. Sure. Ne? You didn't choose to be born in the 80s and the 90s, right? Mm. And, and we also didn't choose for the country to experience a liberation in 94. We didn't sure. choose those two things. The issue with young people born in, during a period of a transition especially a country transitioning from oppression to freedom, mm. is that they have high expectations about the future that is ahead of them. Mm. Ne? And the future that has been placed in front of us by the status quo is that if you go through education and you complete matric, you complete a degree, there's a particular future waiting for you. Mm. There's a particular office, a car, and so on waiting for you. Mm. Those are promises of a transition, valid promises. But what you but what young people are coming across now is that man i am becoming 28 years old now mm. 32 years old 36 years old and these things are not coming yeah Rebo? because the economy of this transition is not supporting the expectations mm. Rebo? um previously a, a job that was done by a person with matric now requires you to have an honors degree i'm talking about being a receptionist and so on mm. It is because of the economy of this transition and how it has failed to meet the expectations of young people. Mm. Yeah, I am not happy that a large majority of young people are not where they wished to be today. Yeah, I'm sure each young person, when they were doing grade 9, grade 10, grade 11, they had the plan that, hey, by 2021, yeah. I would be doing A, B, C, and D. And they're not doing that mm. at the moment. Yeah, so it means that the way the economy is structured, the way the society is structured, it does not speak to our own uh, aspirations and convictions. Mm. Therefore, we now need to go out and change it for it to work for our own uh, aspirations. Yeah, bro? Jobs are not there, bro. There's just no work. Yeah. Why? Because for the past 40 years, the industrial manufacturing sector in South Africa collapsed. Mm. Yeah? It moved to Asia. 
these televisions and speakers and these cameras, all of them, Canon, they are manufactured, they are, they are manufactured in Asia, meaning these jobs are in Asia. Mm. Yeah, all they give us here is shopping malls, Bay West, Hemingways, and so on. Shopping malls won't develop society. Mm. It's factories, it's manufacturing that develops a society. Zwite, Motherwell, Mtanzane, Zwelicha, Komani, Ntata, all those areas are products of factories. Mm. If you look at their history, those townships and those towns developed because they were, there was a manufacturing sector next to them first. Yeah. Are you with me? Yeah. So a manufacturing industrial economy is what transforms society. So how do we begin now as the youth to participate in the industrial policy debates in this country and push right for an entrepreneurial energy that has industrialization in nature in other words how do we support young people that are trying to establish businesses that are labor intensive in yeah. nature yeah, so the work that you do with uh, with the podcast that we're doing how do we support it to become a big industry yeah. and absorb all our media graduates yeah, you're not going to absorb graduates without an industrial sector yeah, yeah so nmmu if what what is a solo as a group, and this includes Ghana colleges as NAS of Upper Province, as a group, they produce graduates that are probably close to 10,000 per annum. Mm. Right? For all of these universities all of them. combined. They, 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 they won't find work because the country does not have an industrial base. Yeah. Yeah, so if, as a province, we are good at producing Ama Orange, yeah? How do you turn an orange to a perfume, a body lotion, a juice inside the province? Mm. And then from that, you grow a logistics set to employ your BCom graduates. Yeah. You, 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 you grow an insurance and a banking sector. Yeah? You grow a, 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 a media sector. You grow Many industries boom out of an industrial manufacturing base. Mm. Yeah? Now, we don't have that base. That base has been taken out to Asia. Ne? All we have is just speeches and shopping malls. That is why okay, the levels of employment for young people are going to be very low. And that is why a large majority of them are going to be unemployed. Mm. Yeah, so we need a coherent youth movement that is not only going to speak about activism, but that is also going to touch on key economic policy, industrial debates in this country. Mm. Because that is how we're going to create work for everyone who is our, who, 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 whom comes from our generation. Yeah, bro? It is only through putting young people to work, bro, where you're going to develop each other and see each other as a common inspiration. I'm not proud to run ahead when the rest is, yeah. is, is, is behind. And I know what needs to be done. That is why I, I submitted a proposal to be part of the NYDA board. We are hoping the president will respond and appoint us and we get to work to implement as non Because yeah. that's what needs to be done to yeah. change our plight. Yeah. yeah, man, wow, man. Thank you for your time. Uh, we want to keep this short and brief. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your contributions. Wishing you all the best. Um, <coughs> when is the, When are you expecting a response from the president? Hey, it's delaying. Let's say October. October. Yeah. I know you've submitted your thesis. Uh, mm. You're still waiting. You're busy on a book project. There's so much that's happening. Wishing you all the best, and man, and thank you for all of the work that you're doing. Sure, man. Awesome. That's it uh, for this installment of Rising Stars with Pedro Mzileni. Um, go out, go check out his uh, YouTube uh, for the content that he's put out. Look at all of the other videos that we've put out on uh, this series of leadership and all of the other conversations that we've had. And until next time, stay blessed. <laughs>